Hi guys, welcome to episode 22 of the Wild Eye Diaries. It's a busy time of year for us um, in general with the start of our Great Migration Safaris um, literally kicking off tomorrow. Um, and that season's obviously been extended with the new semi-permanent camp that we've been running since the beginning of this month. Um, so the team is split all across the African continent at the moment. Um, adding to that, we will be moving offices next week. So this will be the last episode of the diaries that are recorded in these premises. Um, we're not moving very far upstairs and to the far side of the design quarter. So if you've been to visit us before, don't worry, keep coming to the same place and I'm sure someone will redirect you to here. But next week we'll be showing you a little bit more of the new offices and probably covering some of the, the challenges around the move from here to upstairs. Um, this week, we're going to take you on a bit of a tour of Africa. So we're going to start off uh, with some thoughts that I had um, recorded during the recent Manipul's Adventure Trail in Zimbabwe. And from there, we're going to head up north to Kenya, where we're going to connect with Jerry and Alistair, who are both in Amboseli at the moment. And then from there to the Masai Mara with Mike and Trevor, finally moving back all the way down south to connect with Johan in the Kruger National Park. So, here we go. Here's my insert recorded on the banks of the Zambezi in Mana Pools National Park. So, for a change, um, I'm in the field, which is quite a, quite a nice office to be in. Behind me is the floodplain of the Zambezi River, and we're obviously in Mana Pools. So, we're on our last night here of our Mana Pools Adventure Trail, and it's been a great, great trip. So the trip runs that it's you know three nights uh, at Chitaki Springs, two nights sleeping out under the stars, and then the last three nights out, out here on the floodplain. And it got me thinking about experiences versus photographs. Um, and so for the two days in between where we were walking and slept out underneath the stars, we didn't take many photographs. Um, we saw some cool things, big baobab trees which we climbed into and explored. Um, we did lots of track and sign, trees, grasses. Um, we did walk into lions on one occasion as well. Saw a couple of elephants and had to change our route after that. But all of these things, you know, they, they seem to fall flat in an image. And it got me thinking that we, whilst we're out in the field, we, we can become quite obsessed with capturing images and we start to forget about the experience. And it's something that you would have heard our team of guides mention on several occasions, you know, it's as much about the experience as it is about photography and taking those sort of things home for you. And then last night I was sitting around the fire with one of the guests here and she was saying how her first night in, the, in a tent here, because this is very civilized and we've got a nice big tent, um, the first night here after having spent two nights out in the field where we're literally just sleeping one next to one another and, and taking it in hour long uh, turns to, to keep watch over everyone around the fire at night. She commented on how she almost felt a bit lonely, and it got me to thinking that you know there's a lot of stuff that we we take for granted back home, and maybe on a deeper level, uh, you know, we we don't really connect with people on a really intense level. People will say, "How are you doing? How's it going?" and it's not really it's very superficial, um, and yet out here you start to form incredible bonds, and to be camped out around a fire and then have someone who you don't really know, you've had the last three nights with them out in the field, but have someone that you don't really know keeping watch and basically being charged with taking care of a group of people's lives because out there with no moon, it, you know, it's quite hairy, is, is quite something. And the bond that is formed in this group over the, the period of this trip is just, it's quite something. I have no doubt that all of these guys and ladies will be staying in touch with one another and I have no doubt that it's because of the experiences that were shared whether it was encountering buffalo on foot in Chitake Springs whether it was uh, sleeping out underneath the stars um, having to take an hour-long turn around the fire and some of the guys actually sat up together and sort of chatting and taking images together sharing experiences there was a connection on a far deeper level and that's just with the people never mind the fact that you know you would be lying in bed and you may toss and turn a little bit you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you look up and it's just a blanket of stars so over and above the connection with people there's an incredible connection with nature and one of the guests here uh, they've been on safari a couple of times and he was commenting on how the very first safari that they went on he was actually quite frustrated they come from Alaska they they're used to um, being in the field and being out in the wild and 
engaging and you know, just getting in touch with, with, with nature. And his first safari was all jeep based, and he said it was you know it was great. We were just kind of driving. It was like a bus route that we took, and we you know we saw the lions, we saw this, and everything was next to us. But he said he he just kept feeling this urge to get onto the ground, into the wild, and reconnect. And that's something that this trip allows you to do. Mana Pools as a destination certainly allows you to do that because of the amount of time that you spend out of the vehicle and on foot. Um, but I think this trip, where you literally are sleeping underneath the stars and just really immersing in the wilderness um, is a great way to connect with people but also to reconnect with oneself and of course with nature so I guess the take-home message here is that we should all try and do things that maybe make us feel a little uncomfortable from time to time the guest who commented on how amazing it was to sneak out under the stars and take that watch and um, was quite nervous about those two nights under the, the, the stars now she can't get enough of it she wants to do it more and more and, and prefers to be there than in, in the tent so we should take risks, but we should also take the time to try and explore deeper connections, both with other people um, and with nature. And before I get too deep and philosophical, that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, you can check out the trip report from this Monopools Adventure Trail on, on the website in the next couple of days. And we will be back here again next year. There are a couple of places left. So if you've been following this story um, and my stuff on Instagram and from the trip report and you feel that this is something that you would like to do and something that uh, would maybe take you out of your comfort zone and help you to grow as an individual and as a photographer, because we have been taking photographs as well, then uh, maybe you should consider joining me here next year. Right, so hopefully that wasn't too deep and philosophical for you guys. Um, we're going to move up a little bit now and keep things a little bit more lighthearted as we head to Amboseli in Kenya, where Jerry and Al are going to share an update from their time, where they're both hosting private guided photographic safaris in this incredible part of Kenya. Well, the diaries, hey, hope it's going well. So I'm standing at Altakai, which is lodged, I'll show you now, in Amboseli. Behind me are the marshes. Uh, the mountain's actually over there somewhere. We saw it this morning. But um, I'm up here. I've just wrapped up a private guided safari with two guys from Turkey. Awesome. Most of you will know them. England and Sajid. Great people. Like I said, we're at Altakai here. This is the lodge. It's built in about a half moon that runs around this way, and most of them have either a view of the marshes. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a lot of elephants over there. Um, or then you have a view of the mountain. So great, great lodge. Great experience. And the city's been very different. I mean, this morning we had the stock standard stuff, and it really is stock standard for this place, of elephants in front of Kilimanjaro. Beautiful stuff. There was mating, there was kids running around. Well, kids, elephant kids, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, great morning out. What's been interesting though, is the amount of water here because of a shitload of rain has turned it into a birder's paradise. So this morning I just recorded some of our morning. We spent a morning with Flamingos, a lot and a lot of flamingos. They're in the water courses and stuff, and it was great, absolutely amazing. So, here's just a little excerpt from our morning, and that's me for now. Enjoy. Love of my love. Hello. <laughs> okay, we are in um, Amboseli, Alta Car Lodge, heading out for the last game drive of this particular private guided trip, and I'm off to the Mara. So yeah, just a couple of sights around Amboseli for you guys. <laughs> Okay, so the mountain, where is it? There, has shown itself. Need to get the shots. Yes. Yes. So, um, what we're going to do now is, let me pick, show you here. There's the mountain right here. 
So we're gonna now go and turn around. We've played with the flamingos for long enough. Look for elephants to put in front of the mountain because it's one of these places where you need to try and get that shot. Um, that's our plan for now, but hopefully I'll share that with you in the next episode. Uh, from here I'm off to the Mara with these fine gentlemen, and then, um, where are we going then? Which Mara? fine gentlemen? Oh no, sorry, not you guys, eh? Which fine gentlemen? <laughs> Other fine gentlemen. <laughs> I, I, know, I know some. <laughs> anyway, we're going to work an elephant and put him in front of the mountain. Uh, my name's Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. Chat to you next time. Bye. Hey everybody, I hope you've enjoyed Andrew's episode of the Wild Eye Diaries this week. Those of you that follow me on social media will know that I've been on a privately guided safari to both Lake Nakuru and Amboseli National Parks. Today last, marks the last full day of our time in Amboseli before my guest heads on to the Masai Mara for our first official Great Migration Safari tomorrow and I head back home to Johannesburg. So I will be in the office full time um, from Monday next week and you can expect full updates from me in terms of guest images, blogs, and trip reports. So I look forward to catching up with all of you, um, as well as posting more regularly on social media. But for now, the focus is spending as much time as we can out in the field. And with that being said, it's time for a quick bite to eat and then back out again on safari. So hopefully, Amboseli, as has produced over the last couple of days, will have something in special in store for us this afternoon. So nice and short and sweet from my side. Hope you're all having a great time, and I hope you've enjoyed the episode thus far, and we'll catch up sometime next week. Cheers from Amboseli. As you can see, the rains that fell in Amboseli earlier this year are really providing some incredible sightings, but also very different to what Amboseli has been in the past. Um, the rains have also fallen in the Masai Mara, but a very different kind of setup over there. Not nearly as much water as uh, Mike and Trev update us from a very special part of the Mara Triangle. Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of the Wild Eye Diaries. Um, I'm coming to you from the Masai Mara. How's about this view behind me? Um, and we've had an absolutely incredible safari so far. Very, very privileged with what we've seen. Um, and we honestly couldn't have asked for a better week so far. We've seen Scar, famous lion, first time for me to see him, first time for guests. Absolutely incredible. We've had a few other good lion sightings. We've seen four different leopard and we've seen a crossing. Unbelievable crossing yesterday um, of just over a thousand zebra and about 150 wildebeest and it was just great timing on our side. We were there for about half an hour, we saw the build up, all the, wilde uh, all the wildebeest zebra coming down to the water and yeah, next thing we knew it was just chaos, zebras in the water, wildebeest in the water, crocodiles, uh, so yeah, incredible start, um, absolutely loving the Mara again, can't wait to be back here, I haven't even left yet <laughs> um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll do a bit more of a, an update once I'm back in office and share a little bit more content. Uh, Mike's joined us yesterday. Here's Mike. Hello, Mike. Hello, everyone. Um, on his big cats and tuskers. Um, nice to have him in camp. And having said that, I'm going to hand over to Mike. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Trev. Hello, everyone. Uh, so as Trevor had mentioned, I have now arrived in the Masai Mara for the last leg of the big cats and tuskers safari. And in the July departure we end here in the beautiful Masai Mara and Trevor has showed off a lot of this beautiful view. We had arrived yesterday late evening, um, checked into camp, had a few good lion sightings prior to our arrival, um, beautiful sunset and we saw massive um, of wildebeest coming in from Tanzania and hopefully going to be crossing the sand river soon. Where we are currently standing, and to myself and all the guests on the Big Cats and Tusker Safari, this is one of the best introductions to the Masai Mara. As you can see behind me over here, all guests are enjoying a bit of a breakfast right out in the middle of the Masai Mara with this incredible view. And for those of you who have visited us here in the Mara, will know exactly what this scene is. Um, and it is the out of Africa scene, uh, the movie where Meryl Streep and Robert Redford um, share their adventures of, of Africa. And just look at that, absolutely incredible. We're about to sit down for a breakfast before we go and enjoy the rest of our day exploring the Mara. 
Anyway, I hope that you enjoy this episode of the Wild Eye Diaries and we look forward to catching up with all of you in the next episode. Goodbye for now. So for all of you guys who are joining us this season in Kenya for the Great Migration or Masai Mara Experience Safaris, I think you're in for a treat. Um, the first month of running our New Look Camp has been a massive success. Guests have been providing us with some incredible feedback and um, it's only just the start. So yeah, very much looking forward to getting up there myself next month and checking that whole system out. Again, it's been a while. Um, but right now we're gonna move on to the final insert for this week as we connect with Johan, who's hosting our Kruger Photo Safari. And there's still space to join Johan there later this year. So if the idea of great cheetah and leopard and lion sightings excite you, and you want to travel at the peak of the dry season, trust me, this is going to be one that you want to find out a little bit more about. Hi everybody, hope you've had another fantastic week. Um, from last week, um, when I was in Timbavati, I've now moved across to the Kruger, not too far from, um, from the Timbavati, but currently at Camp Shavu, hosting our Kruger photo safari, it's also five nights, um, similar to the Timbavati Safari. And I wanted to share with you guys quickly just um, what it looks like and what we've seen so far. So, my room, as you can see, nice and spacious. There's a bath there, with it over there, and also a nice outside shower. Let me show you over here. And the great thing about this, so outside shower, Check the view. Okay, so as I mentioned, we'll be here for five nights. Um, we're currently on night three. And similar to other years hosting this Kruger Photo Safari, this concession just always delivers. You know, I haven't come here once where, um, where the gaming has been quiet. It's, um, we've had some amazing lion sightings. There's actually a coalition of five males um, that are hanging around the area and also another coalition of eight males um, that have been hanging around. So, fantastic line viewing. We've had um, leopard viewing. There's a female that we think has cubs and we haven't seen the cubs yet, but it will definitely be one of our missions for one of the um, afternoon or morning safaris. The area then also has um, a lot of good general game viewing, good elephants, and more often than not at the waterhole here between game drives, um, there's a lot of game coming down. So we've had um, rhinos come down, we've had elephants come down, we've had giraffes, general game, we heard lions one night. Um, so really um, productive waterhole which really makes uh, the, the whole experience so much better. Um, it's not just about the game drives, but even between safaris, you can sit on your veranda, and as you can see, like here's the room, you can sit from your veranda and watch game come and go as they please. So we'll be here for another uh, two nights. I'm looking forward to seeing what is in store for us. There's also been a lot of mist um, over the valley first thing in the morning, so definitely hoping for some predators um, in the mist, and we'll definitely be sharing those images with you guys. That's about it for me for this week. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and I will catch up with you guys in next week's episode. Until then, cheers, have a good one. Right, so that's the end of episode 22 um, of the Wild Eye Diaries. It also marks the end of a chapter uh, in the history of Wild Eye as we close up shop in these premises where we've been for the last seven years and start a new chapter as we move to our new offices upstairs. I'm very excited about the move and the new look office space and can't wait to share more with you guys in the new week. Cheers.